Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn to our next presenter, uh, who is Lydia Ponce de la Vega, uh, a, a doctoral candidate in Hispanic Studies. Um, and the title of her presentation today is Virtual Repatriation, Repaired, Returned, and Reborn. Uh, without further ado, go ahead, Lydia, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Cecily. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. OK. All right, so um, thank you. Thank you so much again, uh, Cecily and all my colleagues. I'm very uh, happy to be presenting with all of you today. And so my, my talk today is titled Virtual Repatriation, Repaired, Return, Reborn. Um, so archives, both digital and non-digital, are storytelling mechanisms that tell certain stories while erasing others. With the narratives retold, mistold, and untold by archives, we must ask whose stories are being told and who is the storyteller? To engage these questions, I focus on the case of the Biodiversity Heritage Library, or BHL, an online open access archive that compiles global literature about biodiversity. Given the BHL's connection to natural cultural heritage and its global outlook, the library faces issues of nationhood, coloniality, and repatriation. This relates to the tension between physical location and archives as holders of nation and culture which has led to unresolved conflict, especially uh, with archives that are rooted in power dynamics between colonizers and colonized. So therefore, uh, some repatriation efforts focus on digital surrogates, arguing that they can be as meaningful as the, as the physical object itself in what is called virtual repatriation. Virtual repatriation is the digitization of analog objects of which the virtual surrogate is made available on digital, usually online spaces be accessed by several communities, particularly its community of origin. Um, BHL's chair, Constance Rinaldo, and program director, Martin Kalpatovic, for example, mentioned that, I quote, the BHL is repatriating scientific knowledge to all parts of the globe, end quote. In a different work, Rinaldo gives an example of virtual repatriation and the BHL, that of Biologia Centrali Americana, I quote, a key resource for fauna and flora of Central America. End of quote. This book, The Biologia, is an over 200 volume natural history of Mexico and Central America, published between 1879 and 1915 by British naturalists Frederick Gottman and Osbert Salvin. Its digitized versions in the BHL come from the Smithsonian Libraries and Cornell University. Metadata for its multiple volumes include subjects such as Indians of Central America and Indians of Mexico, along with others referring to non-human species. So albeit Rinaldo's consideration of the biologia as a case of virtual repatriation, this example actually showcases the colonial dynamics of the global South and North, as it establishes the former as an object of study, anchored in an epistemic association between nature and indigenous peoples, while the knowledge production is exclusive to the, to the global North. Moreover, the biologia also evidences the colonial roots of naturalistic research. Gottman describes how the labor involved in their scientific enterprise was greatly undertaken by indigenous workers. I quote, in addition to the material obtained during their various visits to Central America and that sent to them by the natives they had trained, they found it necessary to acquire a more thorough knowledge and employed various expert collectors whose names are recorded in the body of the work." End quote. This passage from Gottman's introductory volume highlights several issues surrounding the production of knowledge about Latin American biodiversity. The quote unquote need to quote unquote train indigenous peoples to follow Western scientific paradigms and the distinction between quote unquote natives as, as some sort of tools and quote unquote expert collectors as epistemic actors points to the unequal valorization of the knowledge production of the colonizer and the colonized. Indigenous peoples are relegated in the text and metadata and alongside non-human species to objects. Even if it is possible to recognize the value of providing global open access to the texts shared by the BHL, Rinaldo's example problematizes virtual repatriation by highlighting the oppressive relationship between the global South and North as sites versus objects of knowledge production. 
even if global audiences can access the biologia online through the BHL, the knowledge production is still centered in the global north, and the insufficiently contextualized metadata perpetuates the colonial appropriation of indigenous knowledge in which this work is rooted. Providing access is not akin to decolonization, just as digitizing is not akin to return or reparation. By considering mere digitization and open access as sufficient for repatriation, virtual or otherwise, digital archives can engage in discursive appropriations of decolonization that obscure the underlying colonial dynamics of their materials and practices. The issue is not one of materiality, but of origin and originality. Virtual repatriation is problematic, not because the digital object is immaterial, but because the analog object itself does not change hands. In this sense, virtual repatriation risks becoming a vehicle for the very colonial legacies it is supposed to mend by overshadowing political efforts for the actual return of cultural artifacts. Nevertheless, the notion of virtual repatriation remains unclear when considering the repatriation of knowledge, which is what Rinaldo and Kalpatovic are talking about, as it is hard to determine whether the object, in this case knowledge, is being repatriated. While it is not possible to materially interact with a physical object, online digital access offers the possibility for epistemic interaction, thus allowing for what I call virtual epistemic repatriation the giving back not of objects, but of knowledge. Of course, the necessary objection concerns the act of giving back. Virtual repatriating efforts can consider the community of origin, but often seek to provide more global access to the materials still from the metropole, rendering the return to the originating community at the very least questionable. How then to create an online space for virtual epistemic repatriation that acknowledges the history and continuum of coloniality and makes room for the collaboration between plural communities. Many critics point to the creation of collaborative catalogs in which the originating communities not only interact with the objects, but participate in the curation and systematization of archival data and metadata. While the colonial geopolitical roots and knowledge appropriation of the biologia, for example, cannot be raised, the VHL could undertake a contextualizing process that allows for diverse, hopefully indigenous communities and scholars to participate in annotating it. These practices could lead, for example, to metadata that do not only reflect the, colon the coloniality of knowledge that this work exemplifies, but challenge it by making the silenced histories of colonization visible. While the digital inclusion of Biologia Centrale Americana would still not be a case of repatriation per se, it could become a case of virtual epistemic repatriation in as much as it decolonizes not the artifact itself, but its storytelling. That is the ways in which the knowledge it contains is presented and contextualized. Its status in networks of biodiverse knowledge, the agents that participate in its creation and potentially the future knowledge production it engenders. While digital objects, especially in digital archives are thought of mostly in relation to an original object, Digital versions carry their own value and open further possibilities for the enacting of knowledge. For instance, as early as 1887, the value of the Biologia for Latin American biodiversity related knowledge production was recognized by the Museo Nacional de Costa Rica. Such valorization continues today, as current Latin American biodiversity studies still rely on the work of Gottman, Salvin, and their indigenous partners. Furthermore, the BHL itself contributes to these digital and non-digital networks of biodiverse stories, as the Biologia is engaged in new digital knowledge production associated with the library. In September 2012, the Biologia was BHL's Book of the Week in the framework of the Hispanic Heritage Month. The blog post written for this occasion by Grace Constantino, Outreach Manager at the BHL, also links to the virtual exhibition built around the Biologia by the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and several BHL partners, including Mexico's Comisión Nacional para el Conocimiento y Uso de la Biodiversidad, Costa Rica's Instituto Nacional de Biodiversidad, and Nicaragua's Museo Entomológico de León. While Constantino's post still posits Latin America's object of study, this virtual exhibition is actually an exceptional example of biodiverse epistemic collaboration between the global South and North that can potentially aid in the decolonization of the knowledge contained in the work itself. 
Thus, the work of the Museo Nacional de Costa Rica, contemporary to that of Goldman, Salvin, and indigenous researchers, the continued reference to the biologia throughout scientific research in Latin America, and the BHL's digital knowledge production around this work, exemplify the possibilities of biodiverse epistemologies building upon each other, both in analog and digital ways. Rather than conceiving virtual epistemic repatriation as an alternative to physical repatriation, one could consider it as an inclusive array of cultural digital processes through which natural cultural epistemic heritage can find its digital pathway to its places of origin and to others too, engendering new stories and forms of interaction. It might not be a material reparation, but these steps towards the decolonization of the archive open the possibility of a digital return sustained by decolonial archival practices and anchored in renewed and decolonial stories and storytelling mechanisms. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Lydia, for that, that delightful and I think very important talk, particularly in light of some of the questions that we're facing in 2021 as uh, an academic community.